Welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast, the photo imaging industry's leading news source. Here's your host, Gary Peugeot. The Dead Pixel Society podcast is brought to you by Media Clip, Advertech Printing, and IP Labs. Hello again and welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. I'm your host, Gary Peugeot, and today we're joined by Haim Ariyav, the founder and CEO of Glossy Finish and the co-founder of GF Crew. He's coming to us today from Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Haim. How are you today? Hey, Gary. Good to see you. Good to hear you. Good to be with you. So for the 12 people in our audience who don't know who you are in Glossy Finish, can you take us back 30 years when you got into this crazy business and bring us all up to the present day in about 30 seconds. Absolutely. So classically <laughs> trained as a photographer, graduated from Brooks Institute. RIP. One... RIP Brooks. Exactly. RIP Brooks. Exactly. It got killed by YouTube University. But uh, I am proud to say that I did graduate Brooks when the Brooks family still owned it. Um, and got started in photography in New York City. Uh, my career started as a fashion beauty photographer. Then from there, I moved to Milan, Italy for a couple of years to expand upon my portfolio and my career. Wow. Came back to New York, and this is circa early 90s, and realized that there was this thing called the internet that was starting. And I said, I need a piece of that. And we started a multimedia company that did a lot of early, early work uh, with, with, you know, they called it Silicon Alley at the time, not Valley, but Silicon I Alley. I remember that. It was New York, New York City. Built a successful uh, new media company and sold it to a larger advertising agency. Stayed on for a couple of years as their chief creative officer. Got totally bored and said, I want to go in and start doing some more work, but photography is all I know. So I joined uh, a group called A21 which bought Superstock. If you remember that company, yep. Superstock was one of the larger- Oodles yeah. of Superstock CDs back in the day. Oh yeah, absolutely. Superstock was based in Jacksonville, which is how I ended up here in Northeast Florida. Uh, went over to Superstock and um, kind of helped them digitize and start doing you know, more. Again, now we're talking mid 2005, 2006 era, stayed mm -hmm. there for a couple of years. And then I said, you know what? I got these two young kids that are playing sports. I like photography, but nobody's really delivering photography, uh, you know, at these events. Mm -hmm. So I started a company called Glossy Finish. Mm -hmm. And Glossy Finish basically uh, went to youth sporting events. And at the time, just to go back for one second, we would basically do what I call a spray and pray. And the spray and pray, you've probably heard me say this term, you know, when, when we've seen each other and talked to each other you know, uh, you know, at, at conferences and, and different places, it's when you go out and you photograph everybody and then you put it online and you pray that they buy something. So I started <laughs> right. Glossy Finish as a spray and pray and mm -hmm. it was an epic fail. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that why am I not just focusing my attention, our photographer's attention, just on the photography of the families that want high quality sports mm -hmm. action photography. Now, at the time... You also had, as I recall, you had that mobile printing van. It was actually a printing service it was. that you started out with. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Because that was very different at the time because you had like walk-up kiosks people could use and different things like that. Yeah, we actually, and we still have it. We actually have uh, two of them now and we, we still use them. So we build what we call a mobile photo lab. MPL was the, the acronym for it. And the MPL uh, basically allowed our customers to come inside and it kind of looked like an Apple store. I mean, it, it was clean, it was white, it had you know 12 viewing stations, music playing, uh, people could interact with their photos right there on the spot. And then they would order their packages, be it, uh, you know, be it posters or just standard prints. And we had a little area in the front of the trailer mm -hmm. where we could print everything and families would go home with it. Mm -hmm. And it just took off. Was that a spray and pray type thing? Or yeah, was so it started off as up? a spray. And, yeah, so it started off as a spray and pray. And we were just basically photographing everybody and putting it into the trailer system and letting families come in and, you know, look at their photos. And we realized that 
even though we were bringing the photos right to the field, people were like still not buying it at the levels that we needed to because we were just photographing 100% of the players and not knowing who our customers are. So we changed the whole business and said, let's just go out and find the families first, have them prepay us, focus our attention, pun intended, focus our attention on cameras just on those players and then only upload those photos and only allow those families into the trailer to view and purchase uh, and then us deliver their photos. And then we saw the hockey stick, as they say in business, the business went from, you know, from ground to a skyscraper in no time. Mm-hmm. And we could, we kept expanding upon the process of how do we refine the marketing? Mm-hmm. How do we refine, you know, the photography? What mm-hmm. type of images sell better? And mm-hmm. we caught the eye of a, of a little photography company called Life Touch mm-hmm. back in 2013. I've and heard of like, them. They're yeah, kind of startup, yeah, exactly. Right, aren't they? <laughs> I think they're now part of another company, another little company called Shutterfly. So back in 2013, LifeTouch said, "Hey, we'd love to uh, acquire you, and you bring you know you and your trailers and your staff into you know into the LifeTouch family, and um, and continue doing what you're doing, but let's have you as somewhat of a strategic executive." meaning basically to look at other divisions and kind of figure out how we can improve upon processes and quality uh, with their other groups. And we did that up until 2017 when LifeTouch started having some of its own, you know, financial challenges, primarily in the school business. Um, you know, they just, you know, didn't adapt, didn't change, whatever you want to call it. Well, and they, well, had, and they had a lot of financial struggles because of the ESOP too. I mean, that's... They did. They did. They, I mean, they, I mean, they, that was did. the old, that was kind of the, the, the sort of Damocles hanging over their head was having to fund this ESOP and it consumed all their cash flow. It did. It did. The ESOP was definitely uh, a heavy, a heavy burden on LifeTouch. So what what happened was they said, "Hey, hi, there's two choices here. We can either uh, take this out, you know, take lossy finish out to the, you know, to the woodshed in the back, uh, or if you'd like, you know, let's let's talk about you buying it back." Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, Matt Weiner and I, who's my my business partner and my close friend. He and I said, you know, we, we there's a lot of runway here. We know we can continue growing glossy finish. Let's buy it back. Mm-hmm. So Life Touch was very good to us. Uh, and we bought it back mm-hmm. for honestly for for pennies on the dollar for what they initially, you know, mm-hmm. uh, paid me for it. Mm-hmm. And we've taken and we've grown it year over year since mm-hmm. 2017 and just had our best year ever in 2021 mm-hmm. and uh are now on track to have our best year 2023. So we're an independent company again. So reflecting back on the Life Touch experience for a second, yeah, what was the most positive thing that came out of that? Um, I learned how to sell. I learned how to have better financial discipline as an executive, as you know, as as as, as a leader. Mm-hmm. You know, Life Touch is made up of a lot of really good people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a lot of friends that you know were there that have either since retired or you know are no longer there. So I, I have no, I have no ill will toward right. Life Touch. Well, that's why I wasn't getting there. But, it, but I wasn't trying to get with that. What I was trying to get to was, you know, like you said. It was almost like a learning experience, almost like going yes, to college on running the business that you have now. I got my MBA, my photo, as you know, you could you could jokingly say, I got my photo MBA at LifeTouch. Yeah. Uh, in the four years I was there, I learned a lot about, you know, APV, AOV, you know, average player value, average order value, mm-hmm. uh, participation, you know, all the key metrics mm-hmm. that LifeTouch uses, you know, across their enterprise, we brought in and and disciplined ourselves at glossy finish and still do that when i look at or when you know when glossy finish looks at events i put those key metrics in a place and we've mm-hmm. built you know obviously calculators for them and i can go into any tournament director and say hey we want to do your event and this is what our projections are and this is what our our rebate is going to be and i learned all that uh, you know at at life touch university so Let's talk a little bit about some of those partnerships and tournaments you have, because yeah. you have some big name clients on the glossy finish side. Can you talk a little bit about like Cal Ripken and some of those partnerships? How that Absolutely. Happened? Absolutely. So we were very fortunate. We are uh, the official photographer for Ripken Baseball. Ripken Baseball is basically the business that Cal Ripken and his brother, Bill Ripken, built when they retired from the major leagues. Uh, as you know, Cal Ripken is a, is a Hall of Famer with the uh, with the Baltimore Orioles, his team. 
uh, approached us about 10 years ago and wanted us to come in to you know to their to to their facilities they own baseball facilities around the country and they run large scale baseball some softball tournaments and they wanted basically the glossy finish approach the glossy finish quality and service at their facilities so we've been this this summer is actually our 10th anniversary with uh with Rifkin baseball and we just continue growing with them and expanding with them and, and enjoy that relationship. They just opened up a new facility in Elizabethtown, Kentucky, which we now have uh, a store. And they just bought another facility up in uh, Ohio, Sandusky, Ohio, that we're talking to them about as well. And then they also invested in Cooperstown. Uh, there's a large baseball complex up there, which we're talking to them about as well. Mm hmm. So very excited about that. So Ripken Baseball is 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 definitely one of our larger, uh, most prestigious clients. We also do the national championship for American youth football. Mm -hmm. It's the largest football uh, championship in the country. Every year in December, they bring in about 250 football teams mm -hmm. and uh, about the same number of cheer teams mm -hmm. over a nine-day period in Kissimmee. And we do their national championship. We've been doing that. This will be year 12 for us there. And um, and then we have a group out of uh, Kentucky called Athletics, which runs a lot of their own baseball, pro baseball, softball properties mm -hmm. called the Baseball Nationals, the Softball Nationals, All-American uh, group. And I'm very proud to say that we just won the contract for AAU National Volleyball, mm -hmm. the Junior National Championship. Mm -hmm. This one is massive. This is 5,000. Uh, volleyball teams with 70,000 athletes wow. over a three week period. Literally, Gary, it's being held at a convention center in in <clears throat> in Orlando uh, with 150 courts. Wow. It's, it's massive. It is massive. It li literally will take a little army of, of glossy finish people to 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 manage and uh, and execute that that event. But we're excited about it. And we're already talking about expanding that relationship with AAU. So, you know, but we've been at this for 17 years and you, right. know, you don't, you know, things like this don't just fall in your lap right. uh, because, you know, you're, you're a startup. They fall in right. our lap because of the good work that we do and, you know, people hearing about us and seeing what we've done and having their own kids play at tournaments that we've covered and remembering, you know, who we are and reaching out to us. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're excited about, uh, about where we are and how, how we're growing uh, especially over the next, you know, three to five years. One of the things we've talked about when we've been, I don't know, just standing in a hallway somewhere talking is your idea of photography as a service, as opposed to selling prints. Right. And you've always said that's what distinguishes a profitable photographer who's making a business out of shooting sports and events versus somebody going out on the weekend trying to do it. Can you talk a little bit about how a, a photographer should approach that and sort of the thought process behind that versus just I'm trying to sell a digital download or a print? Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's that's a that's a great question. And I get asked this a lot. Um so yeah, so so our our business mantra, the elevator pitch is, you know, we view photography as a service, not as a product. So the photographer as an artist should get paid for their time to, to capture images and then sell those images as part of the package of their service. So think of it, you know, as, um, mm -hmm. you know, as, as, as a doctor, as a lawyer, you know, their service, they're, they're basically selling you their time, right? I mean, mm -hmm. when you go to a doctor, when you go to a, you know, a lawyer, it, it's a service type. We view photography the same way. So what we do now mm -hmm. uh, in our mantra is that we get prepaid to go out and photograph a player. And if that player happens to be a rock star, you know, a real stud, a pitcher, catcher, second baseman, I'm talking baseball here, and we get 300 photos of that player and we just spent an hour of our time and got paid handsomely for that hour, give them, give the family the 200 photos. You know, mm -hmm. we, we see the photos as the byproduct of the service. Mm -hmm. And I think myself included in the, in the old days and even in the life touch days, People would say, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll capture your image and then I'll make my money by selling you prints or canvases or coffee mugs or throw blankets or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. We took the opposite approach and said, let's view it as a service, get paid for our time, give them the images, let them enjoy them. Because I found that once people have the digital, 
they really don't want to do anything with them besides post them on social. They might print up, you know, a few here or there, mm -hmm. but it's really, they just want to have them and enjoy them. But for the printing, you all, you still offer that. So. We do, but, but here's what's interesting about that. So about four years ago, because we track again, Life Touch MBA, we track our numbers very, very closely, very religiously. And uh, I started seeing that we were selling more all digital packages mm -hmm. and less print packages. Mm -hmm. And now we're at about 75% all digital mm -hmm. and 25% uh, print, you know, posters that we still mm -hmm. print on site. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it changed and the dynamic changed. And we said, let's just, you know, and again, it's because of the photography as a service and this, and the byproduct is the digital. Unlike a lot of folks who do the spray and pray technique, they are very concerned about copyright and ownership, right? They watermark yeah. the images, which again, I have no problem with. It's their yeah. work. They can do what they want with it. But you yeah. really aren't concerned about that at all. No, no. The, first of all, you know, copyright, I think, you know, when you start talking copyright, one, it's a legal term, obviously. And I understand copyright, you know, having run super stock, you know, which is stock photo and see, I understand licensing. I understand copyright, you know, intimately, you know, we give all of our customers, obviously, a personal license. Mm -hmm. you know, to use the images however they want. They can print them, they can do what they want with them. The chances of somebody using that image and then selling it to Coca-Cola for a billboard in the 17 years that I've done it, that I've, that I've been doing this, I should say, it's never happened, you know, and, and, and if it's happened, I've never caught wind of it. So I'm not <laughs> so much worried about the copyright. So when we market, you know, we use the expression, you own the copyright. But what that really means from a customer perspective, because a customer understands that, it means they have the personal license to use it. When you right. start throwing legalese at a customer, right. it just confuses them and they just right. move on and decide they don't want your service anymore. Mm -hmm. So we just say our marketing material says you own the copyright. And I get beat up by a lot of photographers because they're sure. taking the copyright thing, you know, in my opinion, way too seriously. And, you know, and I get that and I respect copyright, don't get me wrong, but really what it means is you own the personal license and do mm -hmm. what you want with this, make as many right. copies, give them to grandma, you know, go from there. Good. Because in the end, you want, what you're looking for is repeat business, referrals, yes. customer yes. satisfaction, yes. which is going to build your business over the long term. Fighting someone over, you know, posting a screenshot that they took off their camera, you know, roll off a gallery and, yeah. because, and they didn't take the watermark out. That's not valuable use of your time. It's not. And and again, because we're now, you know, 75% prepaid, meaning we only photograph the players who prepaid us, let them enjoy the photos. I've already, I've already taken my money off the table. Yeah. So if they want to post them, I mean, we deliver all of our high res unwatermarked images to them digitally mm -hmm. and they can do whatever they want with them. This business model has been very successful and you rolled yeah. it out, actually offering it to other people. Can you share kind of the idea behind that idea that you're going to now open the kimono, if you will, and provide people with the same platform um, that you're using called in a product or service called GF Crew? Yeah. So GF Crew started about three years ago and it, it was closer is, to four, actually. Yeah. You know what? It, it may be actually be four. Wow. Time is flying and, and we're getting old together here. <laughs> uh, we uh, we started GF Crew four years ago and GF Crew started basically as giving independent photographers the opportunity to use the glossy finish process and technology uh, that we've you know built and used successfully for their own business. And we started a Facebook group uh, four years ago. It's now, I think, at about 5,500 members. Mm -hmm. uh, got a lot of people using it. And basically, we we show them and tell them and share with them all the different, you know, tips and tricks that 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 we've used successfully and then also give them a, a PWA, a progressive web app that they can use for their own business. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the guys that have been using it, and you know, I believe you're in the group and you've seen the success stories, they're making some very nice, you know, money on an annual basis doing yeah. this as a side hustle because mm -hmm. they simply sh shifted their thinking and and followed along, you know, you know, our our model, uh, the glossy finish model, which is get prepaid before mm -hmm. you go out and and photograph. And mm -hmm. we've had a lot of success with it. So much success that we actually have now launched GF Crew Pro, which is allowing photographers that want to take it to the next step uh, and use the same 
platform that glossy finish uses so think of GF yeah what's Crew. the difference so that yeah. people i mean i mean and not from a price standpoint but from a offering standpoint because from my in my understanding gf crew vanilla or basic if you will what are we going to call it yeah we're going to call is, it light it's is, is really just version. sharing the marketing plan and the techniques and you offer the media credential and some other things correct but it's but it's really you're on your own you're running the business Correct. So GF Crew, where we're going to call it, you know, now that Pro has been released, we're calling the original version GF Crew Lite. So GF Crew Lite is really just a very, very small sliver of GF Crew Pro, which is the same platform that Glossy Finish uses. GF Crew Lite allows photographers to pre-sign up customers, get prepaid, get money, create on the back end an album that's waiting for photos then to be uploaded into and then notify those customers and 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 it's a very very simple process that works very efficiently there's text to the yeah customer. there's some texting there's, that they can communicate you know, you know so very when, rudimentary when, when it, crm sort of thing exactly very rudimentary crm and they can text the customers when the images are ready and the customer clicks on a link and then the you know the gallery opens up on their phone and you know they live happily ever after and when you know when, when they read you know when they photograph more for that customer in the future the images go into the same gallery and they can see everything in one spot gf crew pro which is the platform that glossy finish uses it's a really incredibly robust crm now you can schedule photographers you can assign games you can communicate with the customers in real time via a built-in texting application there's invoicing you can set your own pricing you can build posters it's 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 an incredible platform that we've spent you know 17 years building and have now rebuilt it to be a true SaaS. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what Pro is. Pro is basically in mm -hmm. a nutshell, it is the same platform that you know has built Glossy Finish into a multi-million dollar business. It's now giving photographers the opportunity to go after large scale tournaments and events mm -hmm. uh, like Glossy Finish. So so really Glossy Finish light or gf crew light i should say yeah is designed more for the person starting out maybe the photographer who wants to right. add this to their existing products and they don't want to really make it a, a job or a business and gf crew pro is really for the person who really wants to take it to the next level maybe have a team of photographers right. maybe have a salesperson who's going to pitch tournaments and schools and things like that is, is that the, really the difference that 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 is actually that that's spot on that is and I, I should hire you to do all of our marketing and advertising well, we should talk after this that <laughs> that is exactly it g of crew light is really for the independent photographer that's looking to do this as a you know as a side hustle to expand upon their existing business mm -hmm. Uh, and it gives them the tools to to do that. GF Crew Pro is for the photographer that wants to do this as a as a full time business. And and and, and it's it not can just, be done because you're doing it. That's the difference. That's the difference. And 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 the and the biggest the biggest thing here is it's not a franchise. It's a software platform. It's mm -hmm. a licensing, but it's truly a partnership. So besides getting the glossy finished brand, which we're not you know you know we're not licensing or or, or franchising the brand, we are allowing independent photographers to have access to all of the tools the marketing my time to help coach them on how to go about you know winning larger scale tournaments and passing things along i mean there's a couple of um gf crew pro users that are on board that we've already fed them events for this summer that we just couldn't do glossy finish couldn't do mm -hmm. because we just you know we just don't have you know the the bandwidth to go after more events because we're already committed to you know ripkin and ayf and and sure. other partners so mm -hmm. we we pass on and that's part of the partnership so that's 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 I think the best part of it all is not only do you have the 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 software and the tools now to do it, but you have you know my time, Matt's time, our team's time to help you be successful with it, because that model basically works. There's an initial startup fee, there's a small hosting fee on a monthly basis, and mm -hmm. then there's a percentage of every transaction that comes that flows through the transaction, mm -hmm. flows through the platform mm -hmm. uh, per transaction, and that's how. We, so the more successful they are, the more successful we are. So we're trying to feed our partners uh, using GF Crew Pro uh, more work. There is, I mean, just to distinguish, GF Crew Lite is still basically free, if you will. I think, the, yes. you know, if you buy, do you still sell the package? The, yeah, the yeah. Stuff? So we have a starter kit that we sell yeah. that's, you know, yeah. not necessary to start it. But GF Crew Lite is only, you only pay when you use it. 
So right. there's no there's no annual subscription, there's right. no monthly subscription, there's no upstart cost. Right. It's basically a five dollar per session for you to use it, and a three percent credit card which goes straight to the. You're not getting working. rich off GF Crew Light, that's for sure. We're not. We're not. We're not. <laughs> so, but on the other hand, for GF Crew Pro, it's a business, and there is some investment involved. Can you just yes. kind of top line some of the commitments you're expecting from Pro Partners? Yeah, absolutely. So you you really need to commit to 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 pro financially, right? So there's there's an upfront cost, and I think it's uh, just under five thousand dollars to get set up. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a monthly hosting of uh, I think it's one ninety five, so just you know about two hundred dollars a month, and then it's eight percent of any transaction that comes through the the platform. From very very similar to how a franchise runs, and that's it. So if you're not using it, uh, you still obviously there's an upfront cost. There's that monthly hosting, but then there's no 8% if there's no transactions coming through it. Mm -hmm. But we're vetting our GF Crew Pro partners very closely. We need to make sure that they're committed to this. We don't want to set somebody up for failure. That's, mm -hmm. not, that's not our intent. Right. We don't want to waste their time. We don't want to waste our time. But if somebody commits to GF Crew Pro, we want to make sure they're as successful as possible. And that's the way we set it up. So there's actually a, a dedicated site to it. There's a there's a page, gfcrew.com slash pro, where people can go and, and read about it. And, and also, obviously, reach out to me directly or join the GF Crew group on Facebook. We talk about it a lot. And then, and that's where, and we're not taking away GF Crew Light. That'll stay. That'll, mm -hmm. that'll still be its own little, you know, sliver of the whole platform. Uh, but GF Crew Pro is really where I see the future. And we're not looking to make this. I mean, you know, there's not a lot of people or companies that do or want to do what Glossy Finish does mm -hmm. uh, at the scale that we do it. But, you know, the ones that do, this is the platform of choice, mm -hmm. in my opinion. <laughs> well, because you do have a decade and a half of development on this. And there are things that are, you've made all the mistakes, and, and I'm still making mistakes and still making <laughs> mistakes, but we correct them. My sales approach on this is very simple. It's like we built it and we use it. Right. So we're not just a bunch of software guys out there that developed the software for this niche vertical action youth, you know, youth action sports photography. Mm -hmm. We're basically a company that built a platform for ourselves that's now allowing others to do what we do. So we're we're, we're basically building competition for ourselves, right? I mean, mm -hmm. if you think about it, mm -hmm. people who have this tool can now go after large scale events, you know, at the size that we do. Mm -hmm. The mantra is if there's a bug in the platform, we have that same bug, <laughs> you know, on our platform. Right. Trust me, we're going to fix it as quickly as possible right. because we need it for our own business, just like they need it for their business. And that's the beauty of, of GF Crew Pro. Well, that's great, Heim. Listen, now you mentioned before the URLs. Is there any other ways you want people to contact you if they're interested in either pro or even just having you do their tournament? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, obviously, uh, my email address is Heim, H-A-I-M, at Glossy finish.com again that's heim h-a-i-m at glossyfinish.com and i would suggest that if they're even remotely interested in just kind of learning more about what we're doing is join our facebook group uh it's gf crew on facebook and uh, we also have a website gfcrew.com and those would be the easiest fastest ways to learn about you know what we're doing with uh you know with these two models well, thanks, Jaime. It's always great to talk to you and look forward to seeing you over the summer, hopefully at an industry event or a tournament or something. Absolutely. Likewise. Always great to talk to you and see you, Gary. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. Read more great stories and sign up for the newsletter at www.thedeadpixelssociety.com.